Okay, I started talking and I was really excited. I looked up and I wasn't recording. That was really annoying. Here we are for solving logarithmic equations part two. Key here is that we're gonna have logs on both sides. So we're gonna handle this one just a little bit differently. Since we have logs on both sides of the equation, here we're gonna handle it just a slightly bit differently and it may, for some of you, be much easier. So the first example that we're gonna start off with here, um, we're going to use log base 10 of 4p minus 2 is equal to log base 10 of negative 5p plus 5. Okay, so in our procedure, right, um, we want to make sure that we have a single log on both, both sides. In other words, um, here I have one logarithm and one logarithm, both sides of the equation. That means that sometimes we may have to use, so we may need to use our um, property of logs, right? To where we combine two to get them together. And we might see that example, yeah, we will see that example. Okay, so. Uh, I have one log on the left side and I have one log on the right side. And this only works if they have the same base. So if you ever catch one where you have log base two of this equals log base seven of this, no idea how that works. I've never come across that. I don't know how it works. So if that ever happens to you, I want you to call me at three o'clock in the morning and yell at me and say, Mr. Stevens, you lied, you son of a gun. And I will talk you off the ledge. So here we go. Second step. And this is going to sound worse than it really is. So it's going to be wordy, but the actual doing it, you're going to go, oh, that was easy. So here we're going to make both sides the exponent of the base. And um, that sounds worse than it really is. So what's the base? Here we have log base 10. So now my second line is going to say 10 raised to the log base 10 of 4p minus 2 equals 10 raised to the log base 10 of negative 5p plus 5. And this works because of that one fun pattern that we had, where we had um, a raised to the log base a of x is just simply x, right? Remember that pattern? Meaning that the argument now is all I'm left with. So here I'm left with just the argument of that log. So I get 4p minus 2 equals negative 5p plus 5. Now, some of you might just look at it and go, well, if we have the same bases, can't we say that the arguments are equal? Yeah, absolutely. You sure can. I want to I wanna be careful because this may actually help you out in the long run with understanding what's going on. But yes, you can, in fact, skip this step right here. I'm going to highlight it. Highlight that, then my southern showed up. It's so weird. When I'm not at school all day, my south comes up. So this step, you can probably skip, okay? Now, part three, solve remaining equation. And that may sometimes involve using uh, your calculator may not. We'll just see what happens. Okay, 4p minus 2 equals negative 5p plus 5. All right, my p's <laughs> are all to the first power. So I'm going to get my p's on one side and my numbers on the other. Here I'm going to add 5p, add 5p. So I get 9p minus 2 equals 5 plus 2. So 9p equals 7 divided by 9 and p equals seven ninths. Okay, that's all I had to do there. And we're done. Let's take a look at another example. Another example, ooh -wee. Oh, I like this one so much. All right, we have log base 12 of x squared plus 35 equals log base 12 of negative 12x minus one. All right, same base, arguments must be the same. 
All right, so 12 raised to that power. I'm skipping this step, and I'm left with x squared plus 35 equals negative 12x minus 1. All right, so Sean Reeder, what type of equation is this? What? Well, Mr. Steves, you see, um, I wasn't paying attention. Okay, thank you, Sean. Sean, pay attention now. What type of equation is this? Well, you see, Mr. Steves, um, that's a quadratic. Good. And how do we solve quadratics, Sean Reeder? Um, well, you see, Mr. Steves, uh, you have to get it set equal to first, set equal to zero first. Yes. Good job. I'm proud of you. Really proud of you, Sean. Way to go. So I have to get this thing set equal to zero. X squared, I'm going to leave um, positive. So here we're going to add 12x and add 1. So add 12x and add 1. So we get x squared plus 12x plus 36 equals zero. Nice. Okay, now what do we do, Sean? Uh, well, you see, Mr. Steves, what you want to do next is, um, is um, and then somebody whispers in his ear, you want to factor. And then he says, factor. And I say, good job, Sean. So then we're going to factor. All right, so we get x and x. Factors of 36 that are closest together are 6 and 6. And 6 plus 6 equals 12. Same sign, both positive. Perfect. x plus 6 times x plus 6 equals 0. What do we do next? Set each one of these factors equal to 0. Since they're the same one, I can get away with just doing one of these. And x here equals negative 6. Right. Yes, you still need to know how to solve quadratic equations, people. Okay, well, let's take a look at one more example. Let's do one more example. Oh, my paper is all cattywampus. Okay, last one. And we have log of x plus the log of 7 equals the log of 37. Cool, real cool. That's awesome. I have two logs on the left side and one log on the right side. So how in the world am I gonna get this to where I have one log on each side? Properties of logarithms, Mr. Stevens. Really good job, proud of you. Addition multiplication law. So I get the log of x times seven equals the log of 37. And the log of x times 7, I'm going to really say that's 7x, right? And the base is 10, so I'm going to get 10 raised to this side, 10 raised to that side. And as we see, same base, so the arguments must be the same. So I'm going to rewrite this one as 7x equals 37. I got one step left. I'm going to divide by 7. And I'm left with x equals 37 over 7. That's all she wrote.